This is the BBC Light Program. Oh, oh, Yarul, who shot me? Me, Wall, just seeing if you were alert. My <laughs> senses are very alert. Never mind, little steaming nut announcer. <laughs> Open up that parcel of mangoes and read the contents. Right. The title of the mango I'm holding is The Great Bank Robbery. Dance, please. The Great Bank Robbery, Part One. An idiot in an attic. Three, pops, ha! Two, three, pops, ha! Two, three, ha! Curse! How dare someone get me out of bed at this time of night? Yes? Uh, may we get out of our beds and come in? <laughs> who are you? Uh, Moriarty, show him the photograph of who I am. Certainment. Voila. Dad, it's you. Entrance. Thank you. <laughs> Have a bugle. <laughs> Lovely. So fragrant. Yes, and only ten and six a packet. <laughs> now, who's your friend? Uh, this is, and I quote from... Uh, yeah, I will. I quote from this plasticine monument of Gilbert Harding. This is Count Jim Fies, Moriarty. <laughs> International chauffeur extraordinary and general handyman. What can I do for you? Uh, we heard you playing melody. 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 Oh, that melody. You like it, eh? <laughs> well, I'm practicing to enter the world's long distance bass drum race from John O'Groats to Land's End. <laughs> and just the right weather for it, too, by the like Alas, unfortunately, I have not the wherewithal to buy a really fast racing drum. Oh. Neddy, have a trombone. My, they're lower than bugles. <laughs> And they suit you, yes. <laughs> Tell me, Nettie, how much wherewithal do you need for this racing drum? Eight pounds ten wherewithal. Hmm. Nettie, with your help, I think we can raise the necessary wherewithals. What, 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 Look, please don't do that full face to mine. <laughs> now, Nettie, we are going to play a little naughty game. Now, this is what we do. First, we sew you into this mattress, like so... <laughs> According to the markings on this albino turnip and the seating arrangements on this banana, Neddy was about to become an innocent participant in a fiendish type robbery. I'm innocent, I tell you, innocent. Now, I if you. I was with Jim. You know Jim? Big Jim. Now, if you'll just. Big Jim. Le... <laughs> Jim. Big Jim's brother. Now, if play. you'll just. Le... Big Jim. Oh, will you shut up? I'm innocent. Now... <laughs> Now, if you'll just... I'm innocent. Will you shut up? <laughs> He's innocent, he said. <laughs> now, if you'll just listen by this... Innocent! Window... <laughs> I'll get it in if it kills me. Now, if you just listen by this window, you'll hear part two. Gentlemen, quiet. <laughs> Gentlemen, as I was saying, I decided to start this bank. So I got a financier to put up the money and a builder to put up the building. Ah, uh, yeah. Hmm? What? 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 Speak up. Listen, what did, what did you put up? <laughs> I put up a sign saying Henry Cran Banker. <laughs> License to sell the monies. No offense, man, <laughs> Mr. Cran Banker. Look here. Why, um, why did you, why did you call it Cran's Bank? After my dear daddy, Lance Corporal Hoggins. Button, 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 if you, you haven't, haven't, haven't called a bank, what? Of course I haven't. You can't call a bank Lance Corporal Hoggins. You know. <laughs> this is not a military bank, you know. It's not. Oh, just a minute, Jim. What, what? <laughs> if we put our way with all the money, then <laughs> you know, this bank, if we put this money in the bank, how do we know it'll be safe, Jim? Aye, that's right. Aye, fair news, aye. You're right. That man can't even afford teeth. Oh. People want money. As I was saying, if I put this money in the bank, how do I know it'll be safe? I've always kept my money in a mattress. 
And I and I have always been satisfied with, with my way with all the, the money, the money in, in, in my mattress. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, dear gentlemen, you gentlemen. Can speak up, will you? I what, can't see him. What? <laughs> This, this ancient method of keeping monies in mattresses is stupid. Well. In my bank, the monies are placed in a... They're placed in a tea caddy, and then they're put in a mattress. <laughs> Double strength security. <laughs> Wait a minute, Mr. Cranny. Is, is this, um, is it your mattress burglar proof? He said, is it burglar proof? Burglar proof. Is it burglar proof? Sir, it is hand sewn by a locksmith. What oh. type of locksmith? Joseph. A Latvian locksmith. <laughs> and only one other person knows the combination. Who's that? The swine who stole all the money last time. <laughs> Gentlemen, 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 stop these naughty withdrawals. There's no need to worry. It was only a fake test robbery done by the insurance agent to test out security guards. And was he satisfied? I don't know. The guard shot him, my dear. <laughs> thank you, thank you for your support. I shall always wear it. And now, gentlemen, <laughs> I declare the bank open. Good morning, Kesha. We um, uh, we would like to open an account and pay in this mattress. Uh, <laughs> certainly, sir. I I'll just count it. One. Yes, it's all here, sir. Um, I say, sir, there's a man in there. Um, yes, yes, he's a friend of ours. Yes. I'm, uh, we are putting him up for the night, aren't we? Oh, and, uh, very yes. light sleeping. Yes. yes, I see. In that case, I'll have it put in your own vault, and then only anything happens, it's your own vault. <laughs> hey! Thank you. And now to the next customer in the red, Max Gildray. The new sound. Of... Now, according to this parcel of fruit from Australia marked Fragile, and the damaged contents therein, we present yes, yes, the yes. Great Bank Robbery, Part yes, 3. Yes, I'll take over from here, Wallace. Oh. With midnight chiming in all directions. <laughs> and Neddy safely inside Crun's bullion vaults. Oh. A plan for the daring bank robbery was put into operation. So over now to a secret blacked-out airship drone at Potter's Bar. Right, all that. Settle down, Heidelberger. Settle down. Settle down, he says. Me who has been married ten times and all under national health. <laughs> Quiet, mind her. Now, where's that Japanese chap pilot, Yakamoto? I am here, Mr. Blass. Uh, was just combing my teeth. I uh, could not find a brush. <laughs> right, all lads, belt up now then. This is Grit Pipe's plan here. Eh? At three seconds to one, or thereabouts, we take off in Count Eidelberger Zeppelin in the direction of up. Oh, boy. Oh, At half past, we hover over Crumb's bank and lower four sky hoops. Whoopee. A gentleman already secreted. I say, can we have a bit of music? This part's a bit boring. I play saxophone. <laughs> Thank you, right. Well, as I was saying, a gentleman already secreted in the mattress will affix the hoops to the sides of the bank and we winch the old lot up. Now, pay off the flute player and off we go. Is that clear to you? No. Why not? There's a heavy mist. Let me look. Four pounds, ten ounces. <laughs> by the centre, it's heavy. Not only by the centre, but at both ends, too. Now, get in the Zeppelin mit Orskabrungen, Volkische Bierwerk, Orskabrungen. Are you a German, Eidelberger? <laughs> no. No self-respecting German would have a phony accent like this. 
please. Uh, second pony accent, uh, we'd like to speak. Uh, fiendish black hand painted zeppelin stuffed with horsehair. Uh, ready for takeoff in the general direction of up. Wait a moment. It looks like a 720 train to Bradford, does that? Exactly. That, my friend, is a zeppelin in disguise. Yeah. Oh, well, right all, in you get. Contact, cast off, put the dinner off. Yeah. Oh. Listeners with keen ears and socks to match <laughs> will recognize that even the sound of the Zeppelin has been disguised as a 720 train to Bradford. <laughs> Kel Melville user ingenuity. I'm innocent. I'm innocent, I tell you. Absolutely innocent. I was with Filthy Fred. Meanwhile... <laughs> you know Filthy Fred? Will you shut up? <laughs> Meanwhile... <I'm> a <laughs> Meanwhile... <I'm> <laughs> according Meanwhile, to this... Well, um. <laughs> Meanwhile, according to this fine head of cabbage, now under treatment at an I've LCC chiropodus. Message, message for you. The young man over there said, let me eat anything. Thank you. <laughs> Champions of liberty! I've never heard of Millicent. Anyhow, we find that back at the bank, the vaults are being patrolled by a stalwart security guard with a loaded bullet. Was an eerie scene. Oh, there's someone struggling in a mattress. I will make a simple test and find out what is in it. <laughs> I have shot him in his mattress. You fool, I'm only playing a game. Hmm? Now take this knife and cut me out. Okay then, rip, rip. What? Thank you. What was you doing inside the mattress, Captain? It was short of stuffing. You're well stuffed, and you, Captain. <laughs> yes. It was a Christmas present for my auntie. What are you stuffed with, then? With horse hair. And they don't, then? Yes. Captain, do horses wear widges on their ears? Widges? No, no such thing. Then what is an ear widge, Captain? <laughs> well, he's a, he's a captain of ear widges. <laughs> That didn't give much of a laugh, did it? <laughs> There'll be better second house. Now, <laughs> the Great Bank Robbery, part four. Oh, listen, oh, no. listen, you're blowing in there. They're paying a record of a horsehair stuffed zeppelin right above us. This is the game Grit that told me about. Little lad, see what's up there? Oh, a zeppelin, Captain. A good try, lad. Wait, who's this being lowered from the zeppelin by his feet? Oh, hello, hello. Thank you, thank you. Hey, what are you doing upside down? The newcomer was a blackened wreck bearing signs of a recent devastating explosion. Yeah, some naughty man gave me a cigar stuffed with horse hair. How did that explode? I put it out in a barrel of gunpowder. <laughs> What were you doing in a battle of cotton powder? I was practicing exploding myself a Guy Fox knife. What a beautiful melody. How does it go again? <laughs> ah, they don't write tunes like that these days. <laughs> and well, lads, lad, if you'll just help me stick these hooks in the four corners of the bank, then we can all go home. Yeah, okay, yeah. Go okay. Now, what's up? That's it. Right. Now, I'm off to get the money from Grip Pipe. Eccles, are you always at Danza? Yeah, all the way up there. 
dear listeners. From the drunkard's lounge of the Temperance Hotel opposite, I watched Crun's bank hoisted into the belly of the Zelopin, the noise of the operation being covered by a recording of a piece of cardboard highly amplified by Ray Ellington. A new cardboard sound for... <laughs> That was Ray Ellington. I say he's done well for himself. <clears throat> now, according to this tray of ready stone walnuts, the news of the Zeppelin bank robbery flashed around the world and finally came to the notice of, of all people, the British police. What? Yes! Oh, gentlemen, a mystery has been committed. Prepare the police airship for immediate pursuit. Right, sir. Issue the following description. Right, sir. Wanted. Wanted. One large horsehair poultice stuffed zeppelin disguised as a 720 train to Bradford with Crun's bank attack. Last seen going in the direction of up near Blackpool. Right, sir. Uh, 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 pardon me, sir. What, 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 what? The, uh... Hmm? The police airship has been... Uh, 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 just a minute, sir. Uh, uh, yes. The police airship has yes. been stuffed with fresh horsehair mm -hmm. and is uh, waiting directly over head. <laughs> yes. Here, have a Benzedrine. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, sir. Mm. I say, uh, how long do they... <laughs> right. Lower sky hooks and haul up the police station. Great steaming of always, good fight. Look to this mutton chop whisker telescope. Gad, it's a peace airship going in the direction of up near Blackpool. Uh, quick, I'll get Von Eidelberger on the Morse code. I'll just strap myself in. Eidelberger, what course are you on? Prunes and custard. You fool! <laughs> Listen, you must throw yourself overboard at once. A police airship is chasing you, and they've already reached the speed of hot pie and peas. The first it snorkel hurts, it's never sleeping. When the standing woman's right, we're hot. Yakamoto, serve cheese and biscuits, then full speed ahead. Right, make for John O'Groats. He's a friend of mine. Well done, Mariotti. Charlie. Nebby, have a piano. So, well, I finished the game at the bank. Now, where's the eight times ten? Surprise, Nebby, surprise. We've spent the money on a new racing drum. <laughs> yes, it will be waiting for you at the starting line of the drum race at John O'Groat. Splendid! <laughs> Dad, with this drum, I'll be the first past the post that lands in. Goodbye! Goodbye, <laughs> Charlie. <laughs> Little Charlie, oh. Naughty little Charlie. No. And Moriarty. Oh. Guess what Neddy will be carrying inside his new racing drum. Oh. oh. 50,000 pounds from Crunch Bank in crisp and notes. <laughs> Money to burn. Oh. Go and get the sardine tins and oil yourself, Moriarty. Right. <laughs> and while Bloodnock's police zeppelin is heading north to find it, the money will be coming safely south inside an innocent-looking racing bass drum, and with that boring expose of the plot, over to the BBC. Hi, thank you. Part five. The last day of the Tour de Britain bass drum race. Hop! Well, <coughs> hello, folks. Here we are at Cobb's Corner, a bare half-mile from the finishing post of the Tour de Britain five-day bass drum race. And here, here comes Sterling Moss, beating a 1926 Allwood British racing drum, followed closely by Sheila Van Dam, beating her highly tuned father, and 
What's this now? Yes, yes. My goodness me, they're really coming along here. It's a wonderful day. You can see them all beating their drums as they come. Yes, that was the Italian ace, Giuseppe Fred Sapone, thundering into the straight of the sticks of a very fast boss drum. So over now to the finishing line. Oh, yeah? I wonder where Neddy is. I wonder where Neddy is, Blue Bottle. Yes, yeah, I wonder where Neddy is. I wonder where Neddy is. Oh, the other runners have Sydney. Oh, and he stands a good chance of coming in last. Yes, he's going to be the winner. 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 Oh, at last, land's end. <clears throat> to go further would be silly. I made it. Silly, get it? Silly Isles, get it? <laughs> <laughs> silly Isles. I'm <laughs> guilty. Dr. <laughs> Fagun, welcome to land's end, my dear. Thank you. Know the traditional privilege of the land of my men. <laughs> We give you this check for eight pounds then, and then we burn your old drum on the bonfire. <laughs> Will this be a happy ending? Well, that's the business. Hello, Nelly. Hello. I'm so sorry, Will it? <laughs> now, where's the bass drum? Nelly? Yes. Where's the bass drum? Where is it? Well, that's it up there on top of the fire. Ow! Fire! Stop the water! Fire! Fire! Here is an announcement. Early this morning, two men were admitted to Brook Street Hospital with scorched fingers. A foreign office spokesman said the men were trying to retrieve a bass drum from a bonfire. Who said the British aren't musical? Good night, Charlies, everywhere. I'm innocent!